what's going on Dragon Brawlers, it's just my voice dead, Scott said I'm back again here for Players Guild and we're not going to dra drag on too much, I just wanted to add our voice to the conversation that you have been seeing over the, the past week or so um, regarding the ban list and obviously this King Vegeta FTK and just generally the state of the Dragon Ball Super Card game in a competitive sense. Now I know we mainly focus on the casual and just the the lore aspects of Dragon Ball here, but we do tend to dabble in the meta a little bit. So uh, I do want to point out uh, Aspira's pure TCGs and of course Joey's Crosswell TCG videos on this. They're very in depth and really good to look at. And I have based some of my arguments on those videos, so please do support them, uh, as well as any other creators that are trying to provide feedback. Um, sometimes we do have to make these videos. Uh, and so today, uh, there's a, f a few talking points, but as you can see on your screen, uh, we do have uh, three cards already here, which are Belmod, Double Devastation, Mercenary Tower, Unequaled Assassin, and King Piccolo, the New Ruler. So why have I got these three cards specifically to show? I think these cards currently represent the main problem in the meta. Um, with Cross Spirits being a hard reset on what it means to play cards, uh, these cards just cannot exist in the meta anymore. These are all cards that can be played for free. Granted, they do have to meet a requirement. Belmod, in, in Belmod's case, it's free battle cards. Uh, in Mercenaries Tower's case, it's, it's if you've got um, battle cards as well. And, of course, New Ruler Pink King Piccolo is, if you've got a unison with three markers on it, I believe it is, it might be two markers, it's, it's something to do with markers, uh, you can just play it, and it's a 20k double strike that can't be blocked. Um, Tau is critical, and Belmod is removal, blocker, and a 20k swing, so very powerful stuff. And, of course, you could use King Piccolo, Mercenary Tau, and then maybe have one more Saiyan on the board, and then use them to go into Belmod, and you can see where the problems start to fall immediately. And when we look at what Cross Spirits has introduced, and the whole Spirit Boost mechanic, and a lot of things requ requiring energy to use their effects, it it just doesn't match with the design philosophy. I think Belmod was one that everybody was gunning for on that ban list, and it just didn't happen which is a real shame and I think Belmod is a prime example of a card that uh, could be banned but I think as a wider expansive ban list these are the cards you need to be hitting it's not just these free cards it's cards like these cards that have been designed to be free played that just can exist when you're slowing the game too too much down because then you see stuff like the King Vegeta or FTK that will just stomp because other decks need time to set up um, and it's a real shame it is a real shame uh, and we see Belmod splashed in all kinds of decks red um, black it it doesn't just stop it being green and New Ruler of course is a great example of a card that should be banned or errated I guess when I say a new ban list, I'm not speaking about bans. I'll get to that at the end of the video in what I think they should do. But you, the the easiest comparison to make is King Piccolo, New Ruler, and of course the uh, t uh, Tapion from Cross Spirits. So essentially, um, you need the unison for both of them because there's the Spirit Boost. Um, but one, you have to pay the Spirit Boost cost, energy, etc. to get it out and get its advantage. Whereas New Ruler, you don't pay any of that, and it's fine. So I think you you, you take New Ruler, you add Spirit Boost to it, you have a, maybe a red energy to it, then that's fine, right? Because then you're at least paying a cost, and I think that's where in lies the problem. Things need costs. We can't have any free cards. Overrealm, for example, is a cost. You have to have X amount of cards in your drop, and you have to warp them. That's fine, that's been a core mechanic of the game since set 3, technically expansion 2, uh, but that's semantics and it doesn't really matter. You see things like Tau, Tau would be way less effective if you had to pay 1 red energy for it and say you had to be at 2 or more energy, maybe 3 or more, 
Bell mod, same thing. I think you could restrict it to Universe 11, and I don't think that'd be a problem. Um, that way, that way you keep these cards in the meta, keep them playable. People who have bought them can have them and still use them, but they are way less effective and way less volatile and toxic to the meta. Um, now I have Dark Broly on the side here, and he's another character I want to talk about. Whereas because he is a character. Uh, and a leader that has already been hit by the ban list. It wasn't enough. Um, I was na I was naive, and I can admit when I'm wrong here, and and thinking that it was enough, and it wasn't. Um, the only thing the ban list really did was take out Mecha Freezer from the mayor, and so I guess that is a success in one regard, but in another, it just wasn't the wide-reaching ban list that we all hoped for. Um, so to go back to that, really. Dark Broly is about free playing cards. You have to have six uh, black cards in your drop area. Send them to your warp. Boom. Comes out a 30k body. And this is... You can do this up to three times a turn. You have the warper card. You have a um, warper card from your opponent's drop. And warper card from the hand. And you have the blocker. That's really scary. All of those cards are really, really scary. Because on their own, they're a 30k swing. Then they have additional effects. So... My proposed solution to that, and it was proposed by other people, and it's been proposed since the ban list, is just add one specified black red rat to them all. Um, as And I was of the opinion that you didn't need to add it to the blocker, but the way aggro decks have turned out now, um, you kind of need to have that on the 30k, because I, uh, in the recent card market event, I took on loads of hits uh, with Mitch Kabura, took it, took it, took it, took it, took it, took it. Um, and then boom, just dropped to 30k for the swing, for the game. There's nothing I could do at that point. Um, and that's that, that just shows how powerful Dark Broly can be. Super aggressive. Um, and that's fine if that's the deck you want to be, but you need to be able to have a cost. So you, you have to tap out. You can't just have all of your energy there for defense and then just play all your big boys and swing without regard. I mean, most people are using that energy now to use the Gogeta package, which, again, I don't necessarily see a problem with, uh, aside from the accessibility and the price of them. Um, but, like, as a concept, I think it's fine. You have to have certain cards in your warp slash drop. Um, you have to have a leader, that's a saying. So I'm not too fussed about them because you do have to pay um, for them. Granted, maybe you could up it in ca in the case of uh, uh, Fort in the Dark Empire, but uh, sorry, no, Fort in the Dark Empire. I think you need is the one that needs to be locked to say in leaders as well. I think that's the one that's not locked to leaders. I'm getting confused a bit, so I'm just gonna try and keep on focus. Again, yeah, so Dark Broly. Um, as much as the Arata on the Awakened side, it's it's whatever. It, it does help, but it doesn't really help. Uh, we just see people move to using the uh, the Xeno, Goku, and Vegeta packages where they do have zero five combo costs, so it kind of makes up for it. Um, I think you have to put those cards in perspective and then do it that way. Uh, and that's basically it, right? Like that's the core problem, I think with the game at the moment. I think it's more systemic than just these specific cards. I think it's a philosophy from an older time in the game and we need to address that head on. We need to talk about it and I think the discussion is there and I can confirm that Bandai do know about it. Bandai have seen the post so when people are like Bandai don't listen to us that is factually wrong. Bandai do listen. They do take things on board but of course these things take time and if you ban these what could happen to the meta like it all kind of flows together and it can't just be snap fingers ban all of these cards have fun overnight it has to be thought about because for all we know these cards are keeping something else in check i, I don't i personally don't think that is the case but i'm just saying there are consequences and repercussions to banning and errating certain cards that we might not see right now we also got to remember that we do not know what is coming I know Bandai tend to do this, which is good and bad that they do tend to hit things and then plan to fix in future sets. And now I don't think that's a good practice personally. Like, I do not want to be there here and be like, oh, it's fine, guys. Let's just wait for UW6 because that's not okay and it's not a good environment to play in. 
Um, so for the meta people, for the people wanting competitive decks, I do think that we need to see an emergency ban list. Um, do I think it's as bad as some people are saying? No, I don't. I, 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 I mean, you could go back and watch my card market streams. I, I took Mechikabura there and I managed to stave off two King Vegeta's quite well. Um, still a terrifying deck, don't get me wrong, it's still a terrifying deck. But, like, just because we have these well-respected players, and I do respect a lot of their opinions, their opinion isn't the be-all, end-all, and please do not let the negativity affect your enjoyment of the game. If you enjoy aspects of this game if you love seeing new cards like i do and new characters and get really passionate and think they're awesome don't let anyone tell you otherwise because that at the end of the day your enjoyment is your enjoyment and if someone comes along and says hey stop enjoying that thing that's their problem and so we want to keep this positive here at players guild uh, Bandai probably going to be watching this video. I've given my thoughts on what I think they should do to help Cross Spirits become a major set. My only caveat here now is if we make Cross Spirits a very powerful set, so you get rid of all these problems, Cross Spirits becomes a more powerful set. We've already seen it with Oceanus. Oceanus spiked up to 30 euros the other day. Um, what happens then? What happens if all of these Cross Spirit decks become super popular? There isn't much stock left of Cross Spirits out in the wild. Um, so then it becomes a case of like set 10 when all the good cards from set 10 just went up in price and no one had them and dormant potential and thankfully we've seen the reprint of dormant potential and it's become less expensive like but I'm just saying that that's a thing to worry about so all of these people who have naysayed and uh, put down cross spirits are then going to be complaining about how they can't get the cross spirits cards they ignored and, and pooped all over because well yeah um, now they're good because you've got rid of the old cards that were oppressing the set. Um, but that's a different story for a different time. Please do let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you gone up against the King Vegetas? Have you gone up against Dark Broly? I mean, Dark Broly's been around for, what, uh, set 11 till set 14 now? I think he's had his time. I love Dark Broly. I love Dark Broly. We, we were one of the first people who called Dark Broly being one of the next best decks. Um... And yeah, like I think his time in the meta has come. We can, I can definitely see us getting uh, hitting him with an errata just to maybe balance him out a bit. Um, and yeah, the guys, that's my thoughts. I'm still not back a hundred percent yet. Uh, we're still on the way to recovery. I do want to thank you all again for those lovely, lovely heartwarming messages. Be it on the Facebook, be it on Discord, just be in it, texting me. Uh, I do appreciate every single comment that has wished me well it's been a tough and scary time but we're getting past it now uh, i'm addressing what i need to be addressed and so i thought i'd make this because i didn't want it to drag on too long and i just wanted to update the community on our thoughts and i want to say that i am in solidarity with our fellow creators with the community here and i do want to voice my um opinion as someone who is seen as a more positive um creator in this space that I do think that we're at a, not a crisis point, but a point where we do need to address that the ban list just wasn't enough. And I think that is um, where we'll end it, guys. So please hit the like button. And if you aren't already, please subscribe. And of course, you can become a member and help us by giving us a little bit of money each month and get some awesome emojis and rewards, especially in the Discord. I know they're getting a lot of um, sneak previews of what's coming. And I guess I can say that we're working on a tutorial series. Um, if you're in the Discord, you'll see some amazing um, amazing work that's going into pre-planning. And we're working with you, the community, to give you what you want. So if you want your voice heard on uh, on beginner's guides and stuff, then get uh, become a member for 99p a month. Head into our Discord and let us know. Hell, just head into our Discord and hit us up in general chat. We're always listening. We're always talking. And yeah. I've been Scott Sedman, and I'll uh, see you, see you soon, guys. I, do, I can't promise it'll be next time, but I'll see you soon. I'm getting there, and I appreciate all of you. Thank you, and good night.